Hi, this is Marshall Jones at Winthrop University, and we're going to spend some time talking about diffusion and adoption theories in practice. You've had a chance to do some of the reading, and we've been talking about these things on the discussion board. Uh, I would encourage you to think deeply, because while I have done this work for some time, it's entirely possible that you're going to bring some perspective to it that will be unique to our discussions. Uh, for those of you who are not in this class, or for those of you who are, we are working from a reading from the Review of Educational Research uh, by uh, Straub on, uh, that looks at theories of uh, diffusion and adoption. Um, that article is by Evan Straub, and it's in the Review of Educational Research uh, from June of 2009. Uh, the title is Understanding Technology Adoption colon theory and future directions for informal learning. One of the nice things about the review of educational research is that it takes complex problems in education and the, the author spent a lot of time in the literature doing uh, an analysis of the available literature in a, a particular area, in this case diffusion and adoption theory. If you are working on a research project and you can find a good lit review then you should Thank your lucky stars and the author who did all that hard work on the uh, on the lit review. Uh, Straub looks at three theories: um, Rogers' theories of innovation and diffusion, uh, the concerns-based adoption model, uh, technology acceptance model, and the universal technology adoption and use theory. For our purposes in here, we want to start with some basic definitions. Uh, one is adoption and, and diffusion. Uh, adoption is when somebody decides to use something. In diffusion and adoption theory, what we're talking about is we're talking about some type of innovation. That innovation might be a device that's being used in a particular organization. It might be a new process. Uh, it might be anything that changes the way things are done within an organization. So adoption is an individual decision, an individual's decision to actually use that innovation. Diffusion is collective adoption uh, over time throughout the organization. Like any good theory, theories of diffusion and adoption really help us to articulate what goes on in that process so that we can both plan for it and manage it as, as well as possible. Uh, there are a couple of things that you might want to think about as we begin working with this. One is extrapolating versus projecting. It's a, it is important when you are working on diffusion and adoption issues that you're pulling or extrapolating out of the data what is actually happening within an organization uh, and not projecting your own value system on that organization. Which is to say uh, you may have this, uh, an idea that the innovation that is being proposed is either very good or very bad. Uh, you have to keep your value system out of it or your judgments out of it so that you can better read what's going on within the within the organization. Oftentimes people who plan for innovations get into something that is called the adoption bubble and what that means is is that when you spend a lot of time talking to people who think like you do then you are more likely to become subject to group think, meaning that if everybody that you talk to thinks this is a great idea, then chances are you're going to miss some of the problems that might arise. So you need to get out of the adoption bubble and you need to make sure that you're talking to people who are able to help you see what some of the problems might be with the innovation uh, and with adopting that innovation within a particular organization. Problems don't mean you shouldn't do it, it just means that once the problems arise that you can you can control for that. There will always be people who think that that a change within the organization is going to be difficult and cumbersome to do. Um, what you need to do is to figure out what those uh, what those uh, objections are and be able to manage those and when necessary to make changes to the innovation that you have planned. 
So you really want to be looking for differing viewpoints. And you need to be asking yourself, the how, how are you going to get those? Are you going to get those by, uh, by talking to people you don't agree with? Um, does the organization um, allow people to speak their mind? Do you need to collect that information anonymously? So think about how you can gather up some of these differing viewpoints. There are some assumptions and some terms that I want you to be uh, familiar with. The first is state versus trait. Um, a, a state, much like a state of mind, is relative. Uh, you might be hungry. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's a passing state because you eat and you're not hungry anymore. Um, the, you might find yourself, uh, uh, somebody within an organization might find themselves being irritable on a particular day because of a particular issue, but that's a state of mind and that's malleable and, can be, tr uh, and uh, can be changed over time. A trait is different. It's fairly stable. Think of it as a personality trait. So as we're thinking about how do we convince people to adopt a particular innovation, we need to be thinking about things that are uh, things that can change and things that are fairly stable within people and within organizations. The other is the idea of social cognitive theory. And to oversimplify things dramatically here, Straub does a much better job of, of uh, providing uh, details of it. Social cognitive theory uh, is this idea that you are sort of creating social pressure on people to, uh, to buy into the innovation. Now, this doesn't mean that you're manipulating them, but uh, some social pressure can often be a very positive thing. For example, uh, if you are uh, going to be changing a grade book system within a school. If there are people who use that grade book system and are using it well and are having a good experience with it, then that begins to create some positive social pressure on other people to adopt it as well. The, so what we want to do is be able to, to, to use this idea of giving people positive examples so that they so that they will want to to uh, embrace the innovation as well and this goes hand in hand with this whole idea of social learning that through um, providing people with good experiences with the adoption that we can model uh, the best use for them so that um, again we're trying to develop that sort of uh, that sort of social pressure on people to, to, to understand that this change is going to be a good thing and it's not going to be a, something that's going to be onerous on you. And then there's the idea of self-efficacy. Uh, and that's, that's an individual's um, perception that they can do this new thing, that they can use this new technology, that they, can, uh, that they're, they're, that they are capable uh, of, of of doing the, the, using the innovation in the way that it's supposed to be used. Um, so people's perceptions can change over time. Perceptions are often much like a state. Uh, so what you want to do is to, to provide um, different experiences for them to be able to learn to master the technology or to use the new innovation in a, in, in a positive way. Straub tells us these uh, provides these three conclusions about technology adoption. Uh, one is that um, adoption is complex uh, and that it's inherently social and that it happens over time. Individuals uh, can, will, will create their own views of the technology and that influences the adoption process. Now, sometimes it starts out that people have a very poor view of the technology, but over time, as they learn more, as they see other people be successful with it, that changes. That gets to this whole idea that their views are malleable, that they can change uh, over time. Uh, so in order to successfully facilitate technology adoption, um, we have to be thinking uh, about people's cognitive, emotional, and contextual concerns. It's not enough just to provide people with good reasons about what about why we're making this change. Uh, it's not just enough to provide people with appropriate professional development. 
We really have to be thinking about the entire person um, as we try and convince more and more people to, uh, to, to buy into the innovation. Because at its heart, what the diffusion and adoption process is, is, is there to do, or, or, or what these theories are trying to help us to do, is to have people buy into the idea of using these innovations as quickly as possible. Because the longer an innovation process draws out, the less likely people are going to be to embrace that, to, to embrace the change, and the less likely it is that that change is going to yield positive results within an organization.